So you just bought your first camera or you're new to photography or maybe you've just dusted off that old camera that you've had laying around for years. Well in this week's video I've got some great tips to help you get started and avoid some of those common mistakes that beginner photographers make. Let's jump straight into it. Hey yo guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Alan King and I make videos about consumer technology and camera gear. So if that's your thing, consider subscribing. In this week's video, I'm gonna be talking about beginner photography and how to get started, or more importantly, where to get started. And that is, you've probably got your camera, whether it's a new one or you've just dusted off the old one that you never got around to using. And you probably thought, oh yeah, most professionals use it in manual mode. So you've flicked it over to manual and, um, probably all your photos haven't turned out as great as you would have liked. That's probably the wrong place to start. The best bet is actually to flick it onto auto mode. Uh, now, of course, if you've just been using, let, let's say camera phones before, they pretty much do everything automated. So initially you're gonna get great results anyway, just from using the auto mode on the camera. But more importantly, the whole point is to try and learn how the camera works. And when you flick it over to auto mode, not only is it doing everything, but it gives you bare minimal options on what you can do. So usually that's choosing whether or not to use the flash, choosing the burst mode, whether you're just using a single shot or multiple shots or timer. And the other option is your focus mode. So that's pushing the button down to focus once on a single object, and then the camera's gonna keep that focus or it's continuous focus where as you're moving the camera, it's gonna be constantly changing. Um, it really depends, obviously continuous focus is better for if you're doing sports. Single focus is perfect if you're trying to line up a shot, whether it's a portrait or landscape or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, my first tip is use the auto mode first. And if that's a little bit too simple for you and you wanna move a little bit further, I would suggest using program mode. Now what program mode does is it automatically adjusts the shutter and the aperture for the camera, but otherwise all of the other functionality is available. So this is kind of the second tier for you to start playing around with the camera. It's gonna open up metering mode. So um, metering is how the camera decides or determines the light that it should be letting into the camera in order to adjust the shutter and aperture speed. So uh, usually, you might have a center focus or a single point in the middle of the shot, or it might use the whole screen to determine the light. Um, so there's various different modes and there's auto mode as well. So um, you can play around with that to see how the camera is gonna operate. Now, obviously if you're backlit or there's different circumstances, you're gonna need to understand how that metering is working. One of the most important things about program mode is that you can tell it whether you believe the shot is too dark or too light. And that's one of the things you can't do in auto mode. So if you've lined up your shot, you think it's really nice, um, you can say, oh no, I need it to be a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. And that will help you to start moving into the right direction with your photography and how the camera's operating. And from there, obviously, then you can start moving to the other modes when you're starting to understand how much light is being let in. And it's always worth paying attention to what shutter speed and aperture is being used on your camera when in these auto modes and program modes so you can kind of get a feel for what is the camera's using and so you know what to use in future. Tip number two is to do with framing your shot. And there's lots of different techniques you can use. One of the more important ones is using the rule of thirds. So whether you're lining the shot up horizontally or vertically, um, you're gonna be doing it so the subject is in alignment. And you can also turn on grids on your camera usually to help with the alignment. Now, of course, if you're doing something like this, uh, the tendency is to line your subject up in the center to get focus and then most beginners will end up clicking the shot there and you've got your subject in center. But it's important to note that if you push and hold the focus down and you've locked focus, 
Now you've got that focus locked, you can actually reframe your shot and move the subject. And this is a really good way to start being creative with your photography from day one. Just that simple technique will kind of take you away from the beginner realm and help you to be more creative uh, rather than just having your subject dead center all of the time. So definitely try that out. Line up your focus, click the button halfway down and hold it so it's got the focus and then move it typically let's say one third in so you've got that shot or try different things you might even want to completely leave the subject just in one of the corners or it depends what you're doing but definitely try that out really important to get some creative shots going tip number three is setting the iso on your camera now the thing to know with iso without going into too much detail is the higher the number with the iso the more brighter your shot will be however the more grainy it will be now it's important to be able to set the number to the appropriate level especially if you're doing low light photography however you don't want it to be the point where your shot is unusable and certainly the higher it gets so different cameras and brands will have different tolerance levels so i've found that on some of the older canons going above 2000 iso is not going to be very usable at all whereas using some of the newer sony models you can go above 3000 4000 and you can still get a fairly usable shot from that um, so the most important thing to do is if you're going to be using ISO mode you can go into the menu system and set up bracketing so there's a min and max value to use and I would highly recommend you get that set up straight away and as I said I would normally probably set a, a higher tier of 3200 for most camera users so you've still got flexibility there but you're not going to completely write off your shot definitely give that a go and the final tip for today, tip number four, is to set up your white balance. And most cameras these days will do a pretty decent job if you leave it in auto. However, there is no harm in setting the setting for your setting, <laughs> right? So by that, I mean, if you can see that it's a cloudy day, just go into your white balance and adjust it to the icon of a cloud. If you're in a really bright sunny day and you're working in the shade of a building or something like that, then set the icon to the one with the shade. And if it, you're just out in the midday sun, then of course use the sun setting and you'll just find that the colors are just gonna look a little bit better than if you leave it for the auto settings. And the same applies for if you're indoors, if you're using fluorescent lighting or just standard indoor um, incandescent lighting, just use the appropriate settings and that will help you out straight away um, so i hope you guys found this video really helpful if you have please give it a thumbs up don't forget to hit the subs button if you enjoyed the content and leave us a comment below what camera are you using how long have you been doing photography and if you've got any questions give us a shout below and i'll see whether i can help you out have a good week guys and i'll catch you soon probably next week peace